never changed. That's never changed and it's never going to. So he would, won't That's have... That's your opinion, will, Nor will anyone... Well, guess what? Guess who's saying it? That's a very clever thing to say. Shall I ask, would you prefer out of your opinion? What a <laughs> fatuous remark. Christopher... Uh, Tertullian, one of the church fathers, said that one of the great things about being in heaven was you'd be able to watch the, the writhings and the tortures of those who'd been sent to hell. And I think what I mainly live for is uh, contemplating the misfortunes of other people. Um, well, that leads me to a very that and um, that and vindication being proved repeatedly and over and over again right when other people were wrong. That does a lot for me. Um, but raising the sights a little, just a fraction. Um, I'd say that the, to me that what matters most is the pursuit of happiness, in the words of our greatest founding father, uh, and the pursuit of liberty, freedom, and that these things are incompatible, completely incompatible with the worship of an unalterable celestial dictator, someone who can watch you while you sleep and convict you of thought crime, and whose rule cannot be challenged, and who's the big brother whose, whose eternal reign uh, may not be disputed. That makes the concept of the pursuit of freedom and happiness completely negative, it negates it. Uh, so I, I, one of the things I live for is to return a stout and joyful non serviam to this dictator who I'm pleased to find doesn't really exist but is instead a creation of those who want to install a theocracy in the real life where I can participate and I'm not going to give them an inch. The second uh, thing I live for is, um, if not exactly passing on my genes, taking part in activities that might allow those genes to be passed on. <laughs> and not... <clears throat> and, uh, not scorning the, the three delightful children who result, who are everything to me and who are my only chance of a, even a glimpse of a, a second life, let alone an immortal one. And I'll tell you something, if I was told to sacrifice them to prove my devotion to God, if I was told to do what all monotheists are told to do and admire the man who said, yes, I'll gut my kid to show my love of God, I'd say, no, fuck you. <laughs> that uh, there's a big relationship between this marvelous time of year and living in a one-party state. Uh, nothing makes me think more than at this time of year of our oldest, humanity's oldest enemy, uh, the authoritarian dictatorship, where you can't go anywhere without listening to the same music where you can't go anywhere without hearing the name of the great leader and his son, the dear leader. <laughs> uh, where all broadcasts, <clears throat> all songs, all jokes, all references are, just for that magic few weeks, just exactly like living in fucking North Korea. <laughs> say about a God who offers but does not impose. And again, those of you who are familiar with the New Testament will think of the imagery of Revelation chapter 3, which speaks of Christ knocking on the door and asking us to open, but leaving that action up, uh, open to us. Okay. Mr. Hitchens. Not imposed. Did you really say not imposed? What if you reject this offer? What are you told by, what have you been told for centuries by Christians? If you reject this offer that took place by means of a torture to death of a human being that you didn't want and should have prevented it if you could. What if you reject the offer? If you, if you accept it, you have eternal life and your sins are forgiven. Oh, great. What a horrible way to abolish your own responsibility and get your own bliss. I don't want it. Oh, you don't? Well, then you'd go to hell. This is not imposed. This hasn't been preached to children. By, by gruesome elderly virgins, we're backed by force for centuries. Hasn't po hasn't, this hasn't poisoned whole societies? No, Imp of course it's, imp it's not voluntary. The, uh, uh, the Pope of Rome, as I call the Bishop of Rome, Ra Mr. Ratzinger, Herr Ratzinger, has recently said, actually, it's worse than that. Only my version of Christianity can get you salvation. And there is only one way. I say it in Georgetown. There's only one. You presumably don't believe that because you're an Anglican. But on what basis do you tell the Pope that he's a heretic? Once you grant this stuff, once you start with this white noise chat about redemption, where is it going to end? Of course there's nothing voluntary about it. And 
I must say the book of Revelation seems one of the less uh, voluntary texts of the uh, so, it, all it does is look forward gleefully to apocalypse um, and to, the, to the passing away of this veil of uh, tears into our ultimate destruction this is morality I don't think so Christopher I'm not sure if you believe in heaven but if you do do you think Jerry Falwell is in it no and I think it's a pity there isn't a hell for him to go to what is it about him that brings up such vitriol? The empty life of this ugly little charlatan proves only one thing, that you can get away with the most extraordinary offenses to morality and to truth in this country if you'll just get yourself called reverend. Who would, even at your network, have invited on such a little toad to tell us that the attacks of September the 11th were the result of our sinfulness and with God's punishment if they hadn't got some kind of clerical qualification. People like that should be out in the street shouting and hollering with a cardboard sign and selling pencils from a cup. The whole consideration of this, of this uh, horrible little person is offensive to very, very many of us who have some regard for truth and for morality and who think that ethics do not require that lies be told to children by evil old men. That we're not told that people who believe like Falwell will be snatched up into heaven. Uh, where I'm glad to see uh, he skipped the rapture, just found on the floor of his office, uh, while the rest of us go to hell. How, how dare they talk to children like this? How dare they raise money from credulous people on their huckster-like Elmer Gantry radio stations and fly around in private jets as he did, giggling and sniggering all the time at what he was getting away with? Do you get an idea now of what I... Do you and, believe he believed the, and, what he and spoke? The, and the other way, of course not. He, he woke up every morning, as I say, pinching his chubby little flanks and thinking, I've got away with it again. You think it was a complete fraud, really? Yes. You, you don't think, believe I that, think, I mean, in, in I his reading of the Bible, you don't think he was sincere in his, in his, I mean, whether you agree I, or not with his reading the Bible, I, you don't, don't think he was sincere in what he spoke? No, I think he was a conscious charlatan and bully and fraud. I think if he read the Bible at all, and I would doubt that he could actually read any long book, uh, for, uh, at all, uh, that he did so only in the most hucksterish, as we say, Bible-pounding way. I'm going to repeat what I said before about the Israeli question. It's very important. Jerry Falwell kept saying to his own crowd, yeah, you've got to like the Jews because they can make more money in 10 minutes than you can make in a lifetime. He was always full, as his friends uh, Robertson and um, Graham are and were of anti-Semitic innuendo, yet in the most base and hypocritical way he encouraged the worst elements among Jewry. He got Menachem Begin to give him the Jabotinsky Medal, uh, uh, celebrating an alliance between Christian fundamentalism and Jewish fanaticism that has ruined the chances for peace in the Middle East. Lots of people are going to die and are already leading miserable lives because of the nonsense preached by this man.